Welcome to WAPTEC Reads Wikipedia, basically. This is a quote from a long time ago, or not really. A classic example of a brilliant and winsome man who chose his battles badly, unyielding on petty issues, divided where division was both unnecessary and costly to the very cause he championed. Too often, he seemed to love the fight more than the valid issues over which the fights raged. Depending on what end of the spectrum you're on, you're making a bunch of assumptions about this. So let's talk about the 2021 storming of the United States Capitol and the timeline for it. Let's not. We've all experienced it. We've gone through it. History is written by the victors, and uh, is denied by history revisionists. The Beer, Beer Hall Putsch, I'm pronouncing it badly, uh, Munich failed coup d'etat by the Nazi party led by Adolf Hitler and a bunch of other people. It lists wounded in action, Adolf Hitler, and Goring. There's Rudolf Hess. All the names, just about. Nazi Party versus the Weimar Republic, Bavarian police, German army. It was a failed coup d'etat and an attack on a location. Uh... Not necessarily the same or similar at all. But it is a notable punctuation of it. And it is brought up when people talk about, can you find parallels between any other person you could easily call fascist? Now, there are people who will claim fascism is one thing or another other than what it was. It is a retroactive redefin redefining of it. Because it's not what you say your organization is, it's what they do that we often use as the basis for it. Communism, at its basis, is supposed to have a lot of lofty goals, just like Nazism did. It really did. They're not going to tell you, oh, our goal is to kill off, you know, five million people just because they're of a particular people. It's some other thing. When the American government murdered hundreds of thousands, or whatever the number is, we'll never really know, uh, people who are natives to this particular continent, they did it while saying they were doing something that would be ultimately for the the good of the people. Or, uh, you know, it's, it's the end justifies the means. It always is. When you murder a bunch of people. But let's talk about Mussolini here next. Um, our other, you know, fascist. And if you're not aware of what fascism is, one of the things that people bring up is the fascia. The, I think that's what it's called. It's an axe surrounded by reeds that are bound to it. It symbolizes a lot of things, but the main thing is that the axe blade, or hatchet, is the um, power of life and death by the state, essentially. So, But who knows? Let's talk about the brown shirts, uh, or the black shirts. Uh, March on Rome, organized mass demonstration, October 1922. The one that uh, Hitler did was 1923. Rapid rise of this stuff. It just kind of snowballs. You know? Um, Benito Mussolini, National Fa Fascist Party, ascending to power in the Kingdom of Italy. Basically, the Kingdom wanted him to win. So, there was something within the established governance at the time that wanted someone to take power and not really have an election give them that. Uh, it also should be noted that, that Hitler, there was an election at one point with Hitler involved, you know, all sorts of interesting quasi-parallels. So that's literally it for the video. It's just a bunch of links below. And if you're wondering about the quote, that's for Carl McIntyre. He's a uh, religious intolerant asshat from the past, in my opinion, but he would describe himself as a fundamentalist. And he equated religion and anti-communism with each other you know, let's mix religion and politics together, and totally that's worked every time, and everybody's benefited. I wouldn't call Donald Trump a brilliant and winsome man, 
I would say he chose his battles badly, unyielding on petty bullshit, uh, divided where division was unnecessary and counterproductive to the, to the cause he said he was following. Um, definitely love fighting more than uh, any real valid issues, and the main reason is that was a tactic in the case of Donald Trump. It's self-promotion, raw, unhinged, grifter-based self-promotion. has nothing to do with any particular end goal other than him coming into the U.S. presidency on a massive debt that he had to take care of. And knowing he didn't, he squandered most of what he was handed on a silver platter for his existence. No, he didn't start at the bottom of anything. He'll end that way, maybe. And he's created a religious fanaticism, a L. Ron Hubbard level of, if you want to become rich, start a religion. He's become the God King. And people object to that. Don't call him that. I will, because he wishes to be. He wishes to be Caesar. He wishes to be North Korea's Kim Jong, whatever the heck it is this week. You know, one of them could die and somebody else in the family will take over as the appointed and anointed god. Japan had a emperor that was supposed to be nearly a god. Uh, China has a party that's treated as having the power of life of death and being inescapable. To the point that they will literally sacrifice a couple hundred of their own people in the United States to make sure that they torment any dissident that ends up here from China. They will at least send one person every few weeks or every year or whatever, whatever it takes, a, a, even one person, to remind them that they're never, ever really safe from the Communist Party of China. That's documented factual truth. That isn't a discussion. We're done with that discussion. Um, I can't say I personally witnessed it. I had someone personally do something like that to me. The kind of thing that causes people to say, I'm a, you're a targeted individual. That idea isn't unreal. That is something that does happen. But you always sound paranoid when you mention that someone out of nowhere tried to make you scared of them. It's obviously trolling behavior. It doesn't change whether or not it happened. I watched it happen to another person but couldn't confirm it. The power is what is the goal. It has nothing to do with any kind of outcome. Donald Trump has terrorized the, what, well, like Mussolini terrorized the other fascists because he became too powerful. Donald Trump has gotten within the extremist end of our society, as as extreme as it is. It's a very good comparison with Mussolini in one way. If you're not aware of it, it except for the obvious crap Mussolini did that you can look up, a lot of what he did would be considered almost benign these days. Not, not the really infamous stuff. I'm talking about the crap he pulled, you know, to gain power. He soft-pedaled it. I mean, really, up to a certain point, it wasn't, you know, a mass murder campaign by the Italians. Mussolini is horrible as a person, but... Not apologizing for him, I'm just saying that uh, it's very similar to what we have now. If you look at the pattern or cycle of violence, violent demonstrations or civil unrest as it is defined, not drive-by shootings in D.C., you can see that D.C., aside from being burned down at one point and a couple of other incidents, most of the civil unrest in Washington, D.C. has been symbolic, you know, uh, a very notable example is the KKK showing up. Thousands of them. 50,000 or so is the estimate. Um, gee, what a wonderful day for some horrible disease to go through and wipe them out. But they did a march on Washington, D.C. It's not noted as being especially violent compared to any of the others. I mean, we live in a society that shrugs when there's some violence. Even a death or two. You can look at the history of Mussolini and see a period of time when there was relatively no death. I mean, essentially, it's kind of strange when you look at this. Hitler didn't start off killing people. Intimidation, power, control. The joke about Mussolini and his friends using a syrup of 
vomitous behavior is almost silly, except for what it escalated towards and what actually happened and what was mobilized. It always starts off that way. It doesn't start off with people telling you to their face, to your face, that they're going to murder a bunch of people, that that's their end goal. They don't talk about that except murmuring amongst themselves. It's not, and then they came for me, as the shorthand goes. It's, we all learn from history, even the bad guys who are trying to repeat it. They know what not to do. They sidestep the uh, red flags. This is four years, actually six, really, if you think about what Donald Trump had been doing, and more, of buildup feeding on itself. His behavior fed on what he saw on the net. He was a reflection and a source for the shit that happened. And it didn't come to a head by attacking Washington, D.C.'s capital. That's not it. He has promised on his way out that that's only the beginning. Whether that comes to fruition doesn't matter as far as whether he does it. You cannot kill a movement, and that is what has happened. Welcome to 1920s Germany and Italy and various other places. The Zeltgeist or Zeitgeist of the time. A bunch of people being very upset with the way the world is and being told, you're not smart enough or we don't care about your complaints. This includes people who want universal health care or want a place to live that's affordable. Might include you. Watch out. Thanks for watching. Have a day. Good luck with that.